One night, Amaka wake up with the sound of a child crying. She got out of bed and walked towards the sound, thinking it was her brother. But Chidi was fast asleep. Confused and scared, she returned to her bed. Once upon a time, in the bustling city of Oka, there was a house known for its strange and frightening happenings, located at the end of a quiet street. Every night, the tenant could hear the faint voice of a little child echoing from within, crying out and saying different things. The sound was chilling and sent shivers down anyone who passed by. The tenants couldn't take it anymore and they moved out one by one because of the strange noises echoed from within the walls. The voice of a little child crying and whispering strange things. They spoke of seeing shadows moving on their own. Funny show shifting positions an overwhelming sense of dread that hung in the air. Even the neighbors were not left out. They were all so disturbed by the voices and the strange things happening, especially at night. For years, the house remained vacant, its secrets hidden behind closed doors. Tenants came and went, each fleeing in terror after a night filled with the sound of a child's voice pleading for help from the darkness within. Rumors spread. Some claimed the house was cursed, haunted by the spirit of those who had met tragic end within its war. Why others said is a restless soul trapped between the rings of the living and of the dead forever searching for peace. Mr. Ade, the owner of the house, had been away for a long time. When he returned and heard the stories, he decided to take action. He hired workers to renovate the house, hoping to ease any sign of its haunted past. He also invited a group of pastors to pray over the house confident that their blessing would cleanse it of any wrangling spirit. After the renovations and prayer, Mr. Day assured everyone that the house was now safe. He spread the word that tenants could move in without fear. A month later, excitement filled the air as the Okafo family moved into their new home. Mrs. Okafo, a cheerful woman with a warm smile, bruised herself with unpacking boxes and arranging furniture, while Mr. Okafo, a loving father, inspected the house for any signs of despair. Their children, Chidi and Amaka, ran through the empty rooms, giggling with delight as they claimed their new bedrooms. Despite the wrangling sense of unease that hung, the Okafo family determined to make this house their own. As the sun dripped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the neighborhood, the Okafo family gathered in the cozy living room for their first night in their new home. Mrs. Okafo lit a few candles, casting a warm glow over the room, while Mr. Okafo lit the fire in the fireplace, banishing the chill from the air. As they settled in for the night, the whispers began again. Soft at first, barely audible, above the crickers of the fire, but growing steadily louder 
with each passing moment. Chidi and Amaka exchange in nervous glances, while Mr. and Mrs. Okafo exchanged a worried look. Little did they know, their peaceful night would soon descend into chaos. The voice grew louder, filling the room with their desperate cries for help. And so began the Okafor's family descend into the darkness that looked within the house with all the whispering. They start to get worse. A few weeks after moving in, more strange things began to happen to them. One night, Amaka woke up to the sound of a child crying. She got out of bed and walked towards the sound, thinking it was her brother. But Chidi was fast asleep, confused and scared. She returned to her bed and tried to ignore the frightening sound that evening. The next day, Mrs. Okafo found the chairs in the living room stacked on top of each other. She was puzzled and she asked if anyone had done it as a prank. But everyone denied it. Mr. Okafo's successful business started facing unexpected problems. Deals that were once setting began to fail and clients started cancelling their contracts. It seems like a strain of bad luck had suddenly hit them. Mrs. Okafor's small catering business also suffered. Others were mixed up, mysteriously cancelled, and their financial stability was at risk. They began to wonder about how they would manage their expenses. The strange event in the house intensified. The family had footsteps in the hallway at night. Doors cracked open and closed on their own. And cold drafts swept through the room, even when the windows were shut. One night, Mr. Okofa saw the figure of a small child standing at the foot of his bed. He blinked and the figure vanished, leaving him shaking. The children started to have nightmares, waking up in the middle of the night, screaming about a crying child. One night, as the family sat down to take their dinner, a horror scream pierced the silence, causing them all to jump in fright. Rushing to investigate, they found nothing at miss, no intruder, no sign of danger, but the sense of dread that hung in the air remained, casting a pill over one's cheerful home. As weeks went by, the hunting became more intense. Mr. Okafo began to hear the whispers in the dead of night, urging him to do unspeakable things. Mrs. Okafo woke up each morning to find strange bruises on her body with no memory of how they got there. While Chidi and Amaka, once full of laughter and joy, grew quiet and withdrawn. Their young minds unable to comprehend the horror that surround them. Their spirit for answers and to understand what was going on. Mrs. Okafo spoke to their neighbors and learned about the house's dark history. She discovered that the house had always been plagued by supernatural occurrences and the previous tenants had all experienced similar events. Determined to find a solution, the family turned to the only person they knew the help of a local spiritualist, Ogechi. She came to the house, 
with her assistants and performed ritual to uncover the source of the disturbance. During the ritual, Ogechi the spiritualists revealed that the house was haunted by the spirit of a young girl named Adora, who had died tragically many years ago. Adora's spirit was restless and trapped in the house crying for help. Ogechi the spiritualist explained that the renovation and prayer that the landlord did had not addressed the root of the problem. Adora's spirit needed to be set free and her story needed to be heard. The Okafos learned that Adora had been a victim of a terrible accident in the house. She has fallen into a dipping well in the backyard and drowned. Her family, overcome with grief, unable to bear living there, had abandoned the house, leaving Adora's spirit trapped. Ogechi, the spiritualist, performed a final ritual to free Adora's spirit. She asked the Okafos to offer a heartfelt prayer and promise to remember Adora. The family gathered in the backyard, holding hands and pray for Adora's peace. Despite the ritual, the Okafor's family decided to move. The house held so many painful memories and strange happenings. As soon as they left, their businesses began to recover and their lives returned back to normal. One day, a young and ambitious journalist, Norma, decided to investigate the mystery house. She had heard stories but didn't believe them. She was determined to uncover the truth behind the strange occurrences. Norma started by interviewing a neighbor, a man who revealed little but hinted at a dark family secret. She then spoke to the Okafor family who shared their terrifying experience. Fearless and determined, Norma decided to spend a night in the house to uncover its secret. As she entered the house, she felt a strange chill. She set up her recording equipment and waited. At first, it was silent, but then she heard the faint cry of a child. Mama, Papa, please help me. Norma's heart raced as she realized she was not alone in the house. She tried to investigate further, but strange things began to happen. Doors slammed shut and she heard footsteps. She knew she had to get out. But as she turned to leave, she saw a little child standing in front of her, its eyes black as coal and its skin pure as the moon. Norma tried to speak, but her voice was frozen in her throat. The child began to whisper, find my mommy. Norma's heart raced as she tried to make sense of the child's word. Suddenly, the child vanished and Norma was left standing alone in the darkness. She knew she had to get out of the house, but as she turned to leave, she heard footsteps behind her. She ran, but the footsteps kept pace with hers. As she reaches the door front, it slammed shut trapping her inside. Norma was paralyzed with fear. The full step stopped and a frightened Norma knew she had to think fast or become the next house victim. 
she remembers the the neighbor's hint about a dark family secret and decided to search the house for clue she stumbled upon a hidden room locked away behind a bookshelf inside she found a diary belonging to a woman as she flipped through the pages a name caught her eyes adora the woman had written about her daughter adora who had died in the house under mysterious circumstances norma realized that the child she had seen was adora's ghost trapped between the world searching for her mother norma's heart raced as she read the diary entries detailing the tragic event leading up to adora's death the woman has written about her husband's obsession with their daughter his strange behavior and the strange feeling that something was off in the house as norma read on she heard a faint whispering in her ear don't trust him don't trust him she turned around but there was no one there the whisper seems to come from all around her echoing off the wall suddenly the lights flickered and norma was thrown into darkness she heard footsteps heavy and deliberate coming from the floor above a man's voice boomed down you shouldn't have come here you shouldn't have made it no man knew she had to act fast she started looking for her phone in her bag but the phone was dead the whispering grew louder more urgent get out get out while you can norma rushed through the door but it was talk as if something was holding it shut she was trapped the footsteps stopped outside the room you will never leave this house alive just like adora suddenly the light came back to life and norma saw the landlord standing in front of her norma's feet began to tremble and she was so frightened she was so afraid standing before her is the landlord of the house and the diary was written by the landlord's late wife she remembered the diary entries and the hint about the landlord's obsession with his daughter with courage norma confronted the man why did you do this to adora your own daughter what is going on here the landlord's eyes flashed with anger and he raised his hand pointing at norma you shouldn't have meddled and with that everything went dark norma's eyes scanned through the room searching for any clue that's when she saw a small fashioned key hidden in the shadow it was attached to a nail on the wall and it looked like it hasn't been touched in years with hope norma grabbed the key and approached the door she inserted the key inside the lock and turned it the door cracked open and norma stumbled out into the back of the house but as she looked back she saw the old man standing in the doorway his eyes blazing with anger the house at the end of the quiet street remained vacant a silent reminder of its haunted past and to this day no one have dared to move in or out of that house the faint voice of a little child can still be heard whispering in the wind if you want to rent a house please kindly ask questions before you pay
so you won't attract negativity to yourself thank you for watching the story please share with us which country you are watching from like the story and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell for more stories like this goodbye